In our previous video, we examined effect coding as an alternative way of analyzing categorical data in a multiple regression analysis. In contrast to dummy coding, in which the regression coefficients compare different groups to a specific comparison or referent group, in effect coding, the regression coefficients compare the different groups to the mean of the group means. We previously saw that the overall effect for that categorical variable is the same regardless of whether you're doing dummy coding or effect coding. The f-test for the set of dummy codes or the set of effect codes is exactly the same either way, as is the r-squared. Uh, whatever the construct is that you're working with, race, ethnicity, type of curriculum, different nationality, different types of training programs, whatever the construct, it accounts for the same amount of variance and is just as statistically significant or not significant, regardless of the specific way you code it. That overall effect is the overall effect. It doesn't change. But now, let's look at the regression coefficients. Okay, Here are the regression coefficients using effect codes for the exact same data that we previously analyzed using dummy codes. We can write them out as the regression equation here, okay? Notice that the values for the coefficients have definitely changed from what they were as dummy var variables. And notice with the values of the coefficients changing, the t-tests, the p-values, and the confidence intervals have also changed. So what happened? Well. The overall effect for the three effect codes as a set is the same. They're still examining type of curriculum. But the specific comparisons that the individual coefficients are making have changed. You can think of it as the individual coefficients in effect coding asking different types of questions than the individual coefficients in dummy coding. To see what I mean, <laughs> no pun intended, let's look at each coefficient starting with the intercept or, or constant, which is 509.477. Now, Keep that number in your head for a minute and, and let's revisit what effect coding does. Remember, it compares the different individual groups in our categorical variable to the mean of the means, the unweighted average of all the group means. It's just the average of all the averages for each group. So, What's the mean of the means for our data? To get that, all we do is take the average of the four group means. So it's just 460.101 plus 540.892 plus 531.572 plus 505.342, right? We add up all of those divide by 4, that gives us 2037.907 divided by 4, which solves to 509.477. <laughs> but that was the value of our intercept, wasn't it? Right? We see it right here, don't we? With dummy coding, the intercept was the predicted mean for one specific group, that referent group that all of the other groups were being compared to. In effect coding, the intercept is the mean of the means. All right? So that's the intercept. What about the coefficients for our three effect codes? Let's take a look at each of those, starting with the effect of the math focus curriculum, Math E. Okay, 
Let's write out our regression equation and let's plug in values for each effect code for someone in the math focus curriculum. Now, as always, we start with the intercept. That's always included, right? Now, if someone's in the math focus curriculum, what would be their value for the math effect code? Well, it's one, right? And their value for the language effect code? Well, that would be zero because they're not in that group. And their value for the intensive curriculum effect code would also be zero. They're not in that group either, are they? We solve that and the time zeros drop out and we just end up with 509.477 plus 31.416. That solves to 540.893. Great. That's the predicted score for someone in the math focus curriculum when we use effect coding. But notice it's still predicting the mean for the math focus curriculum group. Now remember, all the values for the regression coefficients changed but it still works out to give us the exact same value within rounding, of course, that we get from dummy coding. <laughs> I mean, isn't that kind of cool? It still blows my mind a bit, All right? So whether we use dummy coding or effect coding, the regression coefficients still come back to the group mean for the predicted, uh, the group mean as the predicted score for someone in that group. So what's the difference between the dummy codes and the effect codes? It's in the individual coefficients themselves. Remember the intercept 509.477 is the mean of the means. And for someone in the math focus curriculum we're taking the value of the math effect code, right? That a math effect, that math effect code coefficient, and we're adding it to the intercept, the mean of the means. So the math effect code coefficient is that 31.416 is the difference between the math focus curriculum and the mean of the means. It tells us that students in the math focus curriculum scored 31.416 points higher than the mean of the means of all of the different curriculum. All right? And because the coefficient is the difference between the math focused curriculum and the mean of the means, the t-test is comparing the math focus curriculum to the mean of the means. In essence, it's asking whether the math focused effect is different from the average effect of all the different curriculum. And if we look at the t-test, we see, yeah, it's different, isn't it? With a, a t with 396 degrees of freedom equal to 2.159 and a p-value of 0 0.031, it's higher than the mean of the mean effect of all of the curriculum. All right? Great. And similarly, the 95% confidence interval tells us that we're 95% confident that the true difference between the math focus curriculum and the mean of the means of all the curriculum is somewhere between 2.815 and 60.017. Now, that's a pretty big range of scores, isn't it? from only a, a small difference of 2.815 all the way up to um, slightly more than 60, right? And that's what's nice about the confidence intervals, isn't it? It suggests to me that our point estimate of 31.416 may be a little squishy. It's not as precise as 31 
0.416 may sound. Okay? Now, how about the language focus curriculum? Let's first calculate the predicted score for someone in the language focus curriculum. Right, that's 509.477, the intercept. Plus, um, well, if someone's in the language focus curriculum, what would be their value for the, the math of that code? Well, that would be zero, wouldn't it, right? They're not in the math group. And their value for the language effect code? Well, now that would be one because they are in that language group, right? And their value for the intensive curriculum effect code? Well, that's gonna be zero as well because they're not in that group, right? Now, if we solve this by dropping the time zeros, we'll end up with 509.477 plus 22.096. That solves to 531.573. That's the predicted score for someone in the language focus curriculum when we use effect coding. But by now, you're probably not surprised that it's still predicting the mean for the language focus group. Again, within rounding error. Now, again, even though the coefficients have changed from when we did dummy coding, it still solves to the same mean for the language focus group. Cool, all right? Now, the value of the language effect code right, that of uh, the effect code coefficient, that 22.096 is the difference between this group and the mean of the means of all of the different curricula. So we see students in the language curriculum scored on average 22.096 points higher than the mean of the means. But is that difference statistically significant? Do we think that there's a real difference between the language curriculum mean and the mean of the means in the entire population, or maybe this is just random sampling error, right? Well, if we look at the t-test, we see that with a, a t with 396 degrees of freedom, our t is equal to 1.519, giving us a p-value of 0.130, which is not statistically significant. In other words, we're not sufficiently convinced that the mean for the language focus curriculum in the population is in fact different from the mean of the means for all the different curriculum in the population of all the kids getting all the different curriculum out there. I mean, yeah, sure, there's a 22.096 difference in our sample. But based on this, we're not ready to say that that difference in our sample isn't just due to some random error, okay? And our 95% confidence interval tells us that we're 95% confident that the true difference between the language focus curriculum and the mean of the means is somewhere between negative 6.505 and 50.697. And notice that the confidence interval contains zero, doesn't it? It overlaps zero. And so we'd conclude that zero difference, no difference in the means, seems reasonable. I mean, it's hard to say there's a difference when no difference is in our confidence interval. Now, again, notice that it's a big range of values for what we think that real difference is out in the population, right? Somewhere from the mean for the language curriculum being 6.505 lower than the mean of the means all the way up to the mean for the language focused curriculum being over 50 points higher than the, than, than the mean of the means, right? Now, with that, let's wrap up this video. 
Before starting the next video, see if you can calculate the, the predicted score for the intensive curriculum group. And then report and interpret the T-score and 95% confidence interval. When you're done or just get stuck, start the next video. Okay? See you then.